Hello fellow graduates. In this video, we are going to talk about another very easy and very new player friendly build in the game TLB Mortal. And I would say this is almost as easy and safe as Wind Sword. And unlike Wind Sword, which is technically actually a bug, this build is not a bug at all. It is just utilizing how water build or let's say freezing build how it works. Basically the whole idea is you freeze the enemy all the time and therefore you you don't need to be over you won't get, get hurt. And uh, yeah and it is really easy, simple and in a way that you could even play it AFK literally your hand can be away from the keyboard. You just need to press down your left and right mouse button and that's it. You just stand there and freezing the enemy and keep on attacking. And of course, there is a problem that once this build, when you reach reborn, a lot of enemies are not being able to be frozen. And you might face a little bit of problem, but in, this, in the middle of this video, I will talk about another advantage of this, that even against enemies that are immune to frozen, there is still a, a quite good advantage of this build. And also around that time, you could already utilize it some kind of other way to, you know, to improve your damage or this and that. So I would, at least from early to middle game till enlightenment, which is already kind of an entry end game, uh, late game, this build is very good. And before we actually dive into the details and how the thing works, let's first show a few, you know, clips about this character and how it goes through the battle along the progression. Alright, let's start with the standard level combat that you know. For in chaos, Levitan can be very dangerous when you are in Golden Core. But in this case, I am just pressing down my <laughs> right mouse button and my left mouse button. In this case, I'm still using a Spirit Torrent and I'm collecting some mushrooms for my mushroom men so that I can deal with Levitan a bit faster. But in general, as you can see, Levitan is mostly frozen. And even if it tried to hit me, it was blocked because I have shield. The reason I have shield is because I'm standing on this you know, energy point and I'm costing mana and then therefore I have shield. And in the end, Levitan is done. I hardly moved my space and I got taken zero damage. And this one is I am uh, just how I am when I was trying to deal with the don't lonely Leonid and I can see that I haven't even learned any proper mind skills. Literally just the not and so move to uh, to have, make sure I have enough attack. And the same thing goes there and I do have combat expertise to switch on my out to make the switch faster. But otherwise, I could, it's the same thing. As long as my cross brand managed to start breathing, there's nothing much to be saying. And in this case, the need was done. Again, I think it takes a bit more than one minute's time, if I'm looking really correctly. Yeah. And again, zero damage taken. And then I will show a few things up against, you know, the Divine Beast. For example, Chomin Bird, just the same thing. And yeah, as you can see, again, the damage was. <laughs> Uh, blocked by a shield and Chomimbers never managed to move, never entered healing phase and that's just how it is because he's frozen all the time I've taken 200 damage, nearly zero, let's call it that way same thing goes with Jolo and as you can see I do use the fire motion so that I can have a bit higher damage because it can be very slow <laughs> it's getting very boring, I'm almost falling asleep while doing using this build because it's so easy and same thing goes with Jowlong, he never managed to do the Jowlong charge or summon thing, anything. Zero damage taken, even with Lu with the same thing. And in this case, because Lu do not summon small uh, mobs for you to freeze and therefore to, for you to use out. So combat is pretty is actually quite useful. But still the same thing, Lu never managed to move from this location. It's always frozen. Just ice. Tornado keep on going and zero damage taken as you do. And fun fact, three left crows in the whole request that you are supposed to die. Yet you can see the three left crows are badass, but no, they are not. I managed to kill them. Look at them, they are on the ground. I managed to continually freeze them and kill them in this quest that you are supposed to die. And this is <laughs> not fair. 
So I basically deal how much around 2.6 million damage around this time. I think that's enough to show. So as you can see from the clips, that the key skill of this build is Frost Brand, this special skill of the water. And the fun fact is, so just like every single other build, water also have a buff and debuff. Normally you would think that the debuff is actually try, you know, to freeze people. Actually, the debuff itself just makes the people slower. But there are three special skills which detonate the debuff where freeze the people, the, the, the enemy. However, Frost Brand it actually do not even belong to that category. It works with the buff Energy Surge, which makes it even better. Because it, even though it works the buff, but it can still freeze the people, which means it have the freezing function. But also, since it has Energy Surge, which means first, Energy Surge, the buff itself, will make you restore energy, so MP one time. But also, any sub special skill which works with Energy Surge, Basically, you, when you consume this energy surge, you will increase your maximum energy, so maximum MP. And for a really long time, so you never have any MP problem. So that's why I'm saying that this is so easy that you don't even need to care about MP problem. And again, this ice tornado, so it seems that the developers really love tornado, tornado skills. I mean, Wind Sword is basically the basic tornado. This one, one of the easiest builds in this game, the ice tornado. And as you know in my channel, one of the most overpowered builds in this game, which is Fire Tornado. I mean, it is not really a Fire Tornado skill by itself, it's just I cut my fire with Tornado, but let's call it that way. Anyway, there are a few special things and really good things about this skill. Like, first of all, it is a duration skill, alright? And uh, so, how long does the duration is? For every stack of energy surge, your duration extended for one second. Okay, and uh, now also if you look at second sub skill, if the skill is cast when there's only one enemy, the cooldown minus four seconds. This is a great type of sub skill, which you know that all the sub special skills that can achieve zero cooldown they have this thing. Well, in this case, we are not even trying to do zero cooldown. All those jazz, we are just using the prop normally. And let's do the calculation. 11.6 seconds basic cooldown minus 3 seconds so become 8.6. 8.6 and you should always have one mastery which give you 25% cooldown. So that is how much? 2.1, 2.2 and you get 6.4 ish cooldown. And that means even if there's a lot of enemies, 6.4 seconds cooldown if you have 6 stacks of energy surge above you can keep this tornado there all the time already but that is not even more there are more look at the tenth one if the skill is cast when you have three stacks of energy surge the duration will extend it for seconds now that means if, as long as three stacks of energy surge three stacks of buff that can be done let's say even in something like foundation <laughs> if that early and three stacks and basically have three seconds duration and plus four you have seven seconds duration that is already longer than the 6.2 seconds basic cooldown and if you have only one enemy that's 2.4 seconds for basic cooldown so you can literally summon two or three tornadoes ice tornadoes and keep they are keep on doing damage and freezing the enemy so this is why it just becomes so good because you have multiple tornadoes being there each of them have 12 percent chance to free the people the enemy and basically that's why you have all the enemy kind of permanently f frozen and since you have all this energy surge increase mp you do not have any mp problem so that's why you can just stand there and keep on casting so the one of the best special skill in this game frost brand and also now another thing and you might have seen that in the clips is also that it is a charge skill and it's a water charge skill, which means if you charge it to the full, it will generate energy pond underneath you. So look at on the right side, that's an energy pond. This is a thing about any water build. And as you can see on the clip, it's those little, you know, blue thingy. And maybe I'll, let me go to the arena. And so let's cast this. So this is how a charge skill works. You see this little thing. And once it charges full, you see this. This is energy pond. And if I 
stand in this thing, and even when I do simple martial spiritual skill, I generate a shield. Right? And let's say I'm not standing in the energy code. When I do this, I do not generate a shield. And this is because actually this is something you should always utilize with any kind of water build. So let's look at what does energy pond do again. Energy pond, if you stand on energy pond, your spiritual skill and special skills, their damage increase by 50%, already great. And charging time minus less also. Yeah, great, great, great. But you consume more energy to cast skills. Even your spiritual skills now consume MP, which seems to be a bad thing, right? That means I need to cost more MP. But first of all, with a special skill works with energy pawn, you have this sub skill for every stack of energy surge, your maximum energy increase 94 for 600 seconds. So you have infinite MP. That's what we already talked about this. But also, you should always have this one thing in your mind skill in the guide. For every one energy you cast skills, you will receive one shield point. And that means that even if I'm, if I'm not using special skill, which is, I mean, that thing, this whole shield guide thing should be there for every single build in this game if you are playing chaos. It's so good. But also, for water, if you're standing in the energy pond, you are just doing normal spiritual skills. So just press down your left mouse button you are also keep on generating shield for yourself and that's why even if an enemy is not freezable just by standing there and doing normal attack generating shield all the time you are already much safer than all the other builds so it works really well with each other and uh, yeah so basically <laughs> freezing and the shield makes you super safe and let's go from how to say starting you should probably starting with this you know spiritual water which is not great you should probably always change to a spiritual torrent when you're in early game you know, it's super long and it's continuous casting it's great everyone loves this <laughs> lovely skill but once you somewhat into middle game you know origin spirit ish I think spiritual water clearly have more damage and especially you are so safe you you just go really close to the enemy and all your seven in this case seven previously must be less the water bots will hit the enemy together and it will just do more damage so switch back to switch spiritual water somewhat in the middle game ish and yeah it has to be energy surge of course that is important and uh, then since you can still freeze the people, <laughs> freeze the enemy, so you don't even need combat expertise to use your ultimate because your ICI just need to feel for you to kill some freeze enemy. So yeah, it still works. But yeah, if you have ultimate, use the combat expertise so that you can use it whenever you want, that is good as well. And motion skill, I mean, if you have water factor, good. But at a certain point in the mid game, you sort of feel like I want more damage. I mean, it's super safe, but you just want it to be faster. And in that case, you can always throw it in, a, you know, fire motion and the fire secret manual so that to increase your damage. And that's another great thing about this. I think in many of my battles in the clips, you see, I do not even have any secret manual or divine power. I own, I don't even think I have any technique and compendium. Or let's say even Sutra, I just need a move to increase my attack, a guide so that I can generate shield, and better with a mastery so that I can renew the cooldown. That cooldown is always good. And that is just enough. It's so good. But yeah, if you want everything, it's always better to have everything equipped with you. And the Fire Secret Manual is good. I mean, you know, it's always good. And uh, divine power wise, I here I use the water one because it has this thing to reduce any extra energy cost in the energy pond. So it's still better and it still costs a little bit uh, mana when you use your spiritual skills. So you can still use your shield. So it's good. And um, yeah. So, right destiny wise, so one thing is tiger spirit dragon. So it's actually very good with this build as well because this one first of all it deals more damage and there's no two seconds i mean if you have seen my uh destiny guide about this 
destiny is you know that it does not trigger every two seconds. It's in fact your triggers much more often, and also this thing when it triggers, it sort of solves that enemy as well. So it's another way to kind of control the enemy. Even though in most of my clips I do not have this, is because I just simply didn't get it. But yeah, it's good to have. Then blood power is still good health for you to recover some MP. But oh right, I forgot to mention only. Like since you have all this MP recovery, so combined with Mu Jing, of course, you got HP recovery. So and I didn't even act activate it. <laughs> just but just you know that you can do it. And uh, again, Mu Meng is this increased maximum stack is good. But as you can see, even with three or four stacks of energy surge, it can even work. That's why it's so easy. You don't even need artifact spirits. And coming back to uh, Red Destiny. Yeah, Spirit Fusion is actually quite good, and Spirit Fusion actually works with any kind of charge skills. So you just need to press down your right mouse button a bit longer because when it triggers the Spirit Fusion, you just see your little bar, charging bar, to appear again. And if you release your mouse button, you are not charging for the second or third or fourth skill. So just keep it pressed down a bit longer. That's how it works. And. Uh, yeah, combat expertise, if you have it, why not? I think that's basically everything about it. It's just really nice to have. And one more thing, energy gathering elixir. It is actually quite good for water and pump build. And for water build, this is nice because this will reduce your charging time. So you do not need to wait for one second to charge. Instead, you just your skill, your frost man skill becomes an instant one. And let's try to see it again. So, come to the arena. Usually, like the first time a cast takes long, right? Almost more than one second. But now if I'm standing here, it's much faster. Because I am in the edge mode, and that does reduce the charging time. And, and here, it's the spirit fusion that appears. As long as following down, this will keep on happening. And, and you can see that. The tiger dragon thing triggers way more frequently compared to two seconds as well. Okay, and now we can use our this thing. If I can actually use it. And now I do not have any recharging time, it just keeps on me. It's their recharging time and this happens. Well this thing. As long as this thing is there, it's always there. And I think it's basically every single um the whole battle, this thing will always be there. And for some reason, this does not allow me to increase my energy source. Some bug in arena, I think. But yeah, it is really good. And finally, let's talk about one thing I didn't even use in, in the entire this playthrough, that is Lingu, that she, her skill does have the thing that allows you to have more uh, attack based on your current MP and if you have infinite MP like in a water build, this she can provide quite a lot of attack. But even without her, just because you are so safe and combined with a fire motion, with fire secret mana, you have enough damage as well. So I will end this video with a small again okay, Mushen Tower run while I am at so formation. So So here I'm at so formation. I do have better attack because I have the mighty strength tavern buff as well as some you know upgraded to enlightenment skills because you know so formation is time you have down field you just have a lot of books to upgrade many of my skills are still in north and so or in spirit or golden core but i it's basically i didn't even upgrade my skill apart from my active skills as well as my move so the proper attack one and uh, yeah as to formation, I could easily do a, a run for the what they call the pagoda, and while again while your fairy flame is there, the damage my damage clear high. But when the fairy flame uh, thing's not there, it's slow but it's very safe. And as you can see, it just everything is just continuously being frozen, and. Uh, and here you can also see that my energy is increasing, right? Now it's already 9,000 compared to previously. When I enter there, it's like 4,000. 
And this is how, in general, that why you do not have any energy problem as well. And uh, so, as long as that's why I'm standing in energy pond, I'm doing some damage, and it's not a problem, not an issue. My energy just keep on increasing. Now it's already more than 10k. And if I had linger with me, that's already an, another more than 3,000 or 4,000, 4, 400 damage, which is not too much because my total and uh, attack is only 3,000, uh, 600, and if I add 400, that is quite a lot, right? And uh, and you know, as this battle goes longer and longer, my energy actually goes more and more if that being less and less. That's another thing I really love about this view that I do not need to care about energy at all. <laughs> it's just so great. And right now I am doing, you know, moving up and down, and down but technically I could literally just stand there, stand in the energy pump, press down my left mouse button, right mouse button, and my left hand can do anything. I can just copy, <laughs> I can do whatever I want to do because just that easy. Sometimes you find, you know, even if let's say draw team or what enemy comes out of their throat and try to do some damage to you, you are in energy pump, you have a shield around you and every time you do a simple spiritual skill which is very fun, you generate more shield around you and how does that even matter? And even for Chong Qi which is really very hard, very difficult to deal with. In this case, just to be safer, you know, since to charge the special skill needs like one second time. Just to be safer, I use my ultimate. And even if I have combat expertise here, but you do not need that because I'm sure you have killed some frozen mobs before you meet Chongqi in the fourth floor, right? And it's the same story. I just use my motion skill whenever I can. Otherwise, just press down the mouse button. And you can see the tiger's dragon thing. It does trigger quite frequently and deals quite some damage. So. And this is how many times absorption failed. How many times now? I have never absorbed anything in this town. And finally, abomination. I think I actually managed to get hit here yeah, like this. And second time, just look at this. One hit, I got hit once. My HP is almost gone. And I could easily avoid it if I simply use an, any kind of skills to generate shield to myself but i want to show you that this is so formation against mu xian tower it's not that it's supposed to be this easy but just because this build can control the enemy and generate shield and deal damage it feels very easy anyway so that's about it thank you for watching and please consider leave a like and subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time